Hi there, I'm Stephen Kopp and this is my partner Monica Dare. We're with Acre Architects. We are the designers of Peter's Wine Bar uh, Patio. For Happiness Wine Bar. And uh, I guess we can take you through some of the design parts that may not be obvious on the first take, but some of the considerations of how do you build something new, first of all, on a really in a heritage district. And then another thing is how do you build small and what were the, the challenges in this project? So we'll tell you a little bit about that. So as you can see, it's a tiny patio. We had four and a half feet to work with here, uh, narrow street. But what we didn't want to do is block off the public from this street because it's one of our favorite streets in St. John. So what we did, you can see the long bar facing the street. So as anyone's coming down, you can talk to your friends, lean up on the side here. I think one of the key configurations that you're talking about is that dialogue, but also it's really steep. So we wanted to have different relationships. So like Stephen was just doing, and I'll jump on the other side of the bar. In the meantime here, as you walk down, what we did is had the builders actually paint blue on one side, which is the brand, the color brand for happiness. So as you go down, you get one perspective. And you, as you go back up towards the city, you get the nice natural. weathered gray of the natural wood. So one of the things that we wanted to make sure is that, the, that there be inter, it's interactive between the street life and the, the, the patio customers, right? So part of it was to have different levels, different types of dialogues. There's a seat to be able to sit comfortably and talk, to go at a different level, still continue that discussion, or be always at eye level with people that you're talking to, and always maintain that relationship with the street level, which, you know, it's a small intervention, but I think it's thoughtfully thought out. Any intervention can actually activate the public realm. So there's great opportunities in the city that are where we see that we hope that people start to take advantage of more of the, of the public realm because I think people do successful things with their businesses already here in the city. So we'd like to kind of encourage that maybe that starts to spill out more into, into the street life because we do have these old buildings and one of the things that we see is that they're more enclosed. They're, they have often, uh, they don't have big open fronts but what they do have is kind of an amazing interior. So how do we kind of bridge that interior and exterior and start to engage the street is something that we're, we're interested in. One of the things that's nice about doing small projects, which you don't always uh, get to do as architects, is uh, really get into the fine details. And as an insider and as someone who uh, has a drink on this patio, there's much to appreciate from the Brody building, all the little details when you're sitting here, the ledge that happens to be at drink level. But we also use uh, tamarack wood because of the nice end grain on the bar. It's a wood that really has a really nice end grain. And we and also then, wanted to kind of uh, bring the fact that it was a wine bar. Corks are often uh, thought of when you think of wine, cheese, this pairing. So this was something we wanted to keep with that tamarack that really starts to bring together the the the, the cheese block aspect and also the, the, cork, the cork ends. And we also were really fortunate to work with Alan Curtis Fanjoy. They're carpenters in the city and they do a lot of work around the city actually and we got to learn from them it's kind of a it's a dialogue and, and Peter and Judith was involved in the project at the time Judith Mack and and everybody was in, engaging in dialogue so how can we make this better not only as a patio but for for the city so the, the for Peter in particular who has a very uh, strong commitment to the city he was always thinking about, well, how can I give back, you know? And it really didn't seem it was about his business. It was about his his patrons and, and his clientele. And for us, it's lucky because, you know, designing a little patio uh, on your favorite bar is somewhat like designing your living room, another mm -hmm. extended living room for yourself, so. So right now, we, in the summer, we tried to find where we, the best sun was. So we did a little quick sun study when we started the project. But this seat just was, the opportunity to get the sun around five o'clock. So this is the happy hour seat. Yeah. So if you sit right in this corner, you get the sun until sunset. But so if we go down a little further, we'll tell you a little bit more about these windows. So Judith and Peter, one thing that they wanted to do was incorporate some sort of um, greenery and, uh, and liveliness to the project. But seeing it's gonna be something that's not maintained all the time, they can just stay out. One thing we wanted to do was to have glass not block the light into the wine bar because it is a small space in there. So we did want to have glass or an opening at this point, but you're still needing the guard. This we thought a perfect opportunity to bring back 
and always have some green in the project. Right. And also keep the light into the window, like you were saying. Yeah. And keep a little bit, uh, keep a little bit of lightness. I think one of the things, if you look at the patio at an acute angle, you can't see in. But if you look at it straight on, if you keep going straight on, you can see things in. So it's this kind of mix of privacy and openness that we're trying to play with, and then having a more open light part of the patio. And then underneath, another thing in architecture that's very important is lighting, especially in, in uh, streetscapes like this. So if you're across the street in the evening, we run we run rope lights through the bottom of this, so which accentuates the detail and the joinery of the project. So you get little little glimpses of light poking through, and it really changes the reading of the project. And you get to see the levels as it moves up as well. The joinery for this project was particularly. In it's kind of loud. Sorry, this is St. John downtown. The joinery for us was important in this project. Uh, this was kind of the concept of the joinery, in that we wanted to celebrate some of the craftsmanship that already exists in St. John, but with a new contemporary way, so that when you're building new, you can still build with the value for the people that are building it, and how they build, and how can they build details that actually they find pride in, and that continue to kind of live on, even as it, I mean, this is in its fifth year, and it's starting to weather and wear, but we still wanted it to last. And it comes apart in pieces, and it gets thrown in the back for storage, but when it comes back out, you still want to kind of celebrate the detail so that they last. So those are things that we kind of worked on. This little piece over here, even though we don't condone, condone smoking, <laughs> was designed for smokers. <laughs> and it also extends the bar out, which allows the waiters and waitresses to come and serve without coming onto the street. So this, this was intended to be able to put a wine glass in there is an ashtray that's missing. There is right a glass we'll ashtray that will be there. And you can put your wine glass and still be part of the patio and not feel like you have to go off in the distance. Yeah. Even though you shouldn't be smoking. And then I think, um, as you can see here, so you can see the different levels. And it's quite steep. So in a way, it was a very big challenge for us to try to, to envision how do you fit a, a maximum amount of people but still feel comfortable and engaged and it's really you know it's amazing it's a testament to the to the camaraderie here of people that drink at the wine bar too but they pack themselves in there and you know and there's a real and real quality of, a, of a, a culture of wine that really starts to celebrate itself out here which is nice. and um, we'll show you one last thing um, I think one thing too is it's easy to think about the patio is just here but the wine bar is really what it's about, right? So looking out was also a very important thing to make sure that we weren't uh, taking away from the beauty that already existed inside the wine bar and to kind of complement it. So we'll just show you a view looking through the window and some of the considerations there. So. And I think having uh, one of the nice things about having a client like Peter is that he lets you think about all of the important aspects of the design. And part of it was really thinking about, well, what do the, what do the people feel like inside the wine bar and as they're looking out? So consideration for all the details, not just when you're on the patio, but when you're inside. What are you looking at all the time? And this one you can see a lot of the wood detail, and in the other one you see the window right through. So, you know, it was a great opportunity for us to, to work with such great uh, patrons, I guess, and, and carpenters. We feel privileged to be able to work with, yeah, like Monica said, Peter and Judith on this project. But not only just the great clients, but to be able to contribute even a small patio like this to the fabric of St. John and this great street being Princess Street in the city. So we hope this continues a trend for bringing back uh, liveliness to the street, which the uh, the wine bar is helping. Yeah, and Peter, I mean, Peter gives so much to this community and we feel it and it comes alive. So we, we like that. That can ex that that can continue in its architecture. So this is just a translation of, I guess, his vision as well. So, thanks. Cool.